Hello everyone, this is Marco and welcome back to my channel. What a great season this is. Finally, the days are getting longer, it's getting warmer outside and life feels much happier, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. So April 16th is when the brand new Jurassic World Dominion merchandise dropped worldwide. But it was quite a surprise here in the UK because we had no indication or clue that anything would be coming here to the UK. Smith's Toys, which is our main toy shop superstore here in the UK, just put the listings up on the morning of the 16th, which is very unusual because they usually put every listing up about a month before release. On the website, they would just mark them as not in stock. That's what they did with Fallen Kingdom and with every other release. So my fellow UK collectors were skeptical at best about actually receiving anything here in the UK Jurassic World wide. But waking up to such great news, obviously, Sora and I just had to go and get some figures for the channel and obviously for my personal enjoyment. <laughs> And oh man, the amount of stuff that Smith's had was just uh, mind-blowing, considering we weren't expecting anything. There isn't any of the, you know, Walmart exclusives and Target exclusives, so we just have like uh, the basic main line in general, and I'm gonna have to have uh, all those special ones sort of uh, sent over from the US, which is incredibly expensive. Uh, they are already pretty expensive here in the UK, but you know, it is for the channel and I genuinely enjoy these figures a lot. Oh, before I forget, uh, the um, Legacy Collection Roland Tembo set is actually releasing here and it's supposed to be in Smith's, but it wasn't at my local Smith's, so that's a bit of a bummer, but I'm definitely gonna get that and review it on the channel. And I'm gonna actually start the Jurassic World Dominion toy unboxings on my channel. I'm also going to upload more sculpting videos more regularly alongside these toy reviews. And obviously, why not start with Blue herself? So I remember seeing the prototype pictures of this figure and they look, it looked all right and uh, I really like the packaging. But this line here, the ferocious packs, are supposed to be replacing the attack packs and wild packs. So don't expect anything mind-blowing with these ones because they're like the basic ones. Well, they're not the basic ones, but you know what I mean. So about the packaging, it is quite different from every other release that we got for the attack packs and wild packs. Those used to come enclosed in a plastic box with a cardboard back but this one is open and you can actually see and pick the best figure that is in the store by checking if the eye paint placement is correct and you know overall just picking your favorite one out of the bunch which is a nice change but at the same time these things can break because obviously kids like picking them up and playing with them and whatever. The artwork on the box is actually really, really nice. It pictures the T-Rex being chased by some vehicles. There's a helicopter and a car on the bottom right. And it's got a very sort of uh, almost lost world, but very Jurassic World Dominion prologue feel to it. The back of the packaging is completely filled with writing, which I'm not going to read. <laughs> and a couple of instructions about the app that you can download and a couple more figures from the line. For the app, you can scan the dinosaur's code, which can be extracted from the back of the figure, which is different from the other releases. Now, the problem with open boxes like this is that the figures are actually really easy to take out and, you know, for children to steal or even adults can steal them, you know. <laughs> You literally just pull that bit off and it slides out. It has a massive upside to it though, which means that collectors can actually put them back in the box quite easily after reviewing them or checking out the figure, which is a plus. Now let's talk about the figure itself. It has a brand new sculpt compared to all the other attack packs and other releases of Raptors. Now the cool thing about these brand new sort of attack pack versions, ferocious packs, is that they actually gave neck articulation to the Raptors. Now every other carnivore of that size in the attack pack line used to have articulation. It was literally just the Raptors that didn't. So this is a very, very welcome change and super lovely. As you can see, you can extract the code from the back, which is a nice touch if you want to play on the words of, you know, extracting DNA from the dinosaur, which surprisingly Mattel hasn't sort of uh, taken advantage of that little play on words, which could have been a cool explanation as to why they moved the code from the bottom of the foot from other figures onto the back. I'll delve into that later. But looking at the figure again, you can see that it has the same articulated jaw as all the other raptors. The sculpt is definitely different because the eyebrows look a bit taller on this one. 
As you can see, there's some lovely detail in the sculpt on the top of the head. There's some lovely wrinkles and texturing on the figure itself. The proportions though kind of lack a bit of realism. Mattel seems to enjoy giving cartoonish proportions to their figures, which I guess is okay because they're for kids, but at the same time, I know that when I was a kid I really liked the kind of realistic looking dinosaurs. That's just my personal preference. Now looking at it from the top, you can see that the hips are quite wide. And that's to accommodate the space for the new scan code which kind of gives the raptor a bit of a pear shape. For some reason, this figure has a very short tail. It looks like a rat tail, and I personally really hate this. <laughs> Again, uh, the sculptors at Mattel tend to give short tails to dinosaurs, but this time they shorten the tail on the raptors even more. The legs articulate backwards and forwards. They don't articulate in and out like the more expensive figures. The neck articulates, which is amazing. The arms articulate too. They don't fold out and in, they just go forwards and backwards, and the tail swivels too. I am very tempted to redesign a new tail for these guys and uh, possibly uh, sell the replacement tails on the internet, on Etsy or whatever. I'll have to have a think about that, and if you're interested, let me know in the comments section down below. Okay, so looking at the paint job, it has actually quite a few um, paint applications on, which is more than usual for attack packs. We have a blue stripe surrounded by a white outline, yellow eyes with a black pupil, and a beige belly color. There's also paint in the mouth with pink, not on the top part of the mouth though, just on the bottom jaw, and teeth paint in the mouth. These paint apps are applied very carefully and quite precisely too, so there's no issues with that. Now looking at the beige colour underneath, you can see that the paint is actually printed on before the figure is assembled together. They printed the paint on the right side of the figure and then the left side of the figure too, and they don't really match together very well. It would have been nice to see the rest of the paint go down the rest of the body, all down the bottom of the tail, and a bit on the neck. So something interesting is that the prototype pictures actually had the blue stripe go down all the way on the tail. but the figure didn't have a beige color on the belly. It's interesting to see how Mattel decided to nerf the paint app on the tail and went with the paint application on the belly. The paint runs down up to the same spot as the first ever Attack Pack Blue version. And as you can see, the paint apps on the brand new one are much better. There's much more of them. And you can see there is generally an improvement on everything about this figure, except for the tail length. It is so nice to actually have that neck articulation there. It makes a heck of a difference. <laughs> Here you can definitely see 100% how much more pear shaped this new one is. But again, comparing tail length, the old one definitely has a much longer tail. It's very interesting to me why Mattel decided to actually change the spot of the scan code. I'm guessing it's because they can actually increase the size of the sticker itself, which makes it easier for the app to scan properly. If that was the case, then they could have shrunken the, uh, the feet down a little bit, giving them less of that cartoony, goofy look. But honestly, that's fine. As a personal preference, I think I preferred it on the foot. This still works really well, and it's actually grown on me quite a lot, because I didn't like it at first when I saw the prototype pictures. You can see on the screen right now that I brought over another Raptor. And that is the last sort of wild pack version. Technically, it's not a wild pack though, because it was released in the Camp Cretaceous set. So it means that they actually could put a bit more effort into the paint job. And it really shows because this figure has the paint going all the way down the tail. It's got the beige under the belly and it's got claw paint on the feet. In my opinion, that is the most perfect Velociraptor Blue attack pack version we've ever got. Just imagine that, but with neck articulation. Uh, this raptor here is the Savage Strike Velociraptor, which is uh, a little bit more expensive. It's like the next step up from the attack pack. And this has got extra articulation in the hips. And it's got the same head articulation as the new one, which is nice. But it's also got a action feature where you press the button on the back and it moves its arms. This is one of the best raptors ever released. It's got paint on the tail, both stripe-wise and belly collar-wise, and it's absolutely stunning. The reason why this isn't my favorite one is because the legs are a bit 
too bent. It looks a bit crouched, but that again, that's just a, a nitpick of mine. The battle damage one is probably one is probably the best one ever released. Actually, um, I don't show it in the video, but I've actually got it. But I have very high expectations and hopes for the brand new extreme damage version of it, which is released as a set with Owen and a brand new character from Jurassic World Dominion. And that seems to have all the paint applications and a very cool battle damage or actually extreme damage feature with a button on the back, just like the extreme damage T-Rex. I prefer that extreme damage over the regular battle damage because you can hide it and show it with just a press of a button and there's no sort of weird poking out knobbly bit that looks a bit like a wart kind of thing. And uh, the slashes actually look like scars when they're not showing the red part underneath. I honestly can't wait to get that one. This one's a very good sort of uh, raptor in the meantime before I manage to get my hands <laughs> onto that new one. The new one seems to have much better proportions too. This one again has got a very short tail. If you want me to make some replacement tails for it out of rubber, let me know in the comment section down below. Now I will be using the app and scan the code and see what happens on the brand new update of the Jurassic World Facts app. Enjoy and thanks so much for watching. More toy reviews coming soon. I would like to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. Seriously guys, your support really does mean the world to me, as it helps me do what I love for you. You help me buy materials, and most of all, you give me a helping hand with improving the quality of the content of my videos. Even if it's just a small donation, every little helps. If you like my videos, please press the like button. And you could uh, consider subscribing, it's free. Oh, and don't forget to press the notification bell button because you don't want to miss any of my new stuff, right? I'm going to say bye now because when you got to go, you got to go. I will see you in the next one.